What if I told you that it's not always rosy and that it's not always as easy as it seems? Because everyone has a journey where they have grown through the curves and the hoops and they have to jump through a lot of things to finally get to the place where it is success. And that's what you and I see. When you see that success, it's very easy for you to question your own path and wonder why things are not working out for you as it is working out for everyone else. Why aren't you succeeding in your business? Why aren't you married and settled? Why aren't you famous and well-known? Why aren't you settled and doing all the great things that you see someone else doing. Life is a process and every one of us gets to the wilderness phase at different points in time. The wilderness phase is actually meant to break you and shape you and mold you to the best and better version of yourself to give you the skill set and the qualities that is required for you to be excellent and to excel at the place of your prominence. If you avoid the wilderness phase, you will miss out. In fact, you will not even get to your prominence because you cannot ex escape it. Everyone that looks successful to you today had a point in time in their life where they went through an experience or experiences that were not so pleasant, something like what you're dealing with. Of course, there are people that are born in more fortunate situations than others, but the focus is really not on them and why they did not have to experience the things that you are experiencing. The focus is on you, in getting the bigger picture, in seeing the bigger picture, in understanding the why of why you are experiencing the difficulty that you're experiencing. And I hear you asking, Ixtel, will this ever end? Is there ever going to be the sun in my sky? Will the rain cease? Will the storm part? I have a word for you that weeping may endure for a night. And a night may be longer than 12 hours. A night may tarry for as long as it can. But for a fact, joy comes in the morning no matter how bitter and cold and gruesome winter is summer will always come along here is an encouragement to you because i think about the time when i was by myself in very very precarious situations and i just did not know when the day would come in fact i was fighting it i was struggling with the fact that i was in the wilderness it felt so unfair it was like why am i going through this is there a logical explanation for why i am facing this difficulty does it make sense even to you, God, that you would allow me to go through this? And then it felt like, Estelle, the fight won't get you out. I think you should comply. I think there are lessons to learn. There is patience that you will learn from going through stuff. There is compassion that you will get. From being in a low place, 
and seeing someone else in a similar place like you once were. So when you are in that season of a wilderness, what should you do? I want you to brace yourself. Number one, go through it. You have to go through it. Number two, identify what are the things about you that are changing. The story of Joseph is a remarkable story about the wilderness experience because Joseph had a dream, was excited about the dream, and then had a coat of many colors, almost like this was the prelude to the realization of his dream. But the coat of many colors when he thought he was at the peak or about to be at the peak and then will have the manifestation of what he had seen vividly in his dream led to a complete collapse. The bottom of the pit sold into slavery accused of rape, thrown into jail in a foreign land. But you see those facts and how bad they sound? But what I haven't really highlighted here, which I'm about to, is the fact that Joseph was learning skills of management. How to be over a household that was filled with servants how to manage people with different emotions. Why? Because in the prison, in the jail, there are different kinds of people that are there. You don't have people in the jail or in prison who are cool, calm, and collected. They're in the prison for a reason, right? And maybe being cool, calm, and collected was not one of them. But Joseph was in charge of the others in the prison. So he learned management. And those were skill sets that empowered him to succeed as the prime minister. God was going to make him prime minister whether or not he had the skill set. He was going, he had the gift of the interpretation of dreams. He did that for the baker. He had no reward from that. He did that for the cup bearer and there was no reward, immediate reward for the interpretation of their dream. But watch this. His gift brought him before Pharaoh. His gift brought him before Pharaoh. But what sustained his legacy and his ability to succeed in that place wasn't the gift. It was the management skill he had learned in the wilderness. I feel like this is a good word for someone. So point number two, take note of what this experience is bringing out of you. What are you forced to learn? Forced because by default, you will not put yourself in that situation. By default, it's too painful of an experience. And so you will never put yourself through it. But here you are through no choice of yours, in the midst of the fire, what are you forced to learn? What is the situation bringing out of you? Pay attention to it and build on it. Because if you had foresight, and if you have foresight, you may already see where God is taking you. Last but not least, do not give up because if you give up there is no other hope and there's nothing to aspire to hold on joy comes in the morning